Idra 10.3 has recently released and with it, it has brought a new tool. Today, we are looking at Ghidra's emulator. For a long time now, I've been using x64 debug and Ghidra side by side to dynamically reverse engineer malware. But that's no longer the case with Ghidra's new emulator tool. I can now launch an executable that has its strings encoded during static analysis and then read them clear text dynamically in memory with the Ghidra emulator. In order to make this happen, I will be using Ubuntu 16.04 inside of a virtual box. You may use any virtualization system or operating system of your choice. Both of these work well on Mac, Windows, and Ubuntu. I have decided to go with Amazon Corretto instead of OpenJDK or Java Development Kit from Oracle, and I do have Ghidra 10.3 installed. So I have found out that installing Amazon Corretto is way easier than OpenJDK or even Oracle's um, Java. So you can install Amazon Corretto yourself at the Amazon Corretto AWS link provided here. And also, the open source Ghidra reverse engineering software suite can be found at this link as well. But the king of the show is going to be the executable file and the documentation that goes along with it. This documentation and this executable is what inspired me to make this video. Craig Young put together a quick yet very well detailed article about how to get started with Ghidra's emulator. We will be using the executable found in this article. so. I suggest that everyone goes and gives it a real quick read. And also, don't freak out if you don't have Coretto and Ghidra installed yet. Just check out my videos. I got one called Ghidra 10 on Windows 10, just for you to help you install Ghidra and Coretto. Likewise, if you think you've already got it down, well, try some of the crafting challenges. I got a lot of stuff on my, on my YouTube channel, so I suggest you show me some love. Go ahead and click some of those YouTube buttons and let me know that you enjoy the content. But if there's nothing else, let's get into it. We're going to start off by looking at Craig Young's post. First look, Ghidra 10.3 emulator. You can find the link below. And once we get here, we're going to scroll down until we get to secure.us Ghidra files sneaker. We're going to click on that and it is going to download for us. I have it here in my downloads. I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto my desktop. Make it easy. And then while you're here, go ahead and breeze over this because we're going to be doing these steps that he has listed as we go along. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that for now. All right, next thing is to, um, we got two options. We can go ahead and dynamically run it, see what it does, or we can jump straight into static analysis. I'm going to go ahead and run it dynamically just to get an idea of what it does. So I'm going to jump to my desktop. And if you're on Windows, you're not going to be able to do this because this is going to be an elf file made for Ubuntu. But if you're on Ubuntu, you can go ahead and give it a shout. First off, we're going to have to chmod it to make it executable. And then after that, let's see what it does. And if you see, it prints out no more secrets. But. If we were to do a strings on it, nowhere in the strings are we going to see the words, no more secret. The closest thing we have is this gibberish right over here. So we are going to see if we can uh, decode all the gibberish that we saw up above by running it dynamically using Ghidra. So, Let's go ahead and make that happen. So I'm going to run Ghidra and I have Ghidra in my programs folder that I created. All right, once you're here, you're going to do Ghidra run. All right, but that's all things you all should know. So let's go ahead and get into it. I want to create a f new project, non-shared. I'm going to call it sneaker. File, import file, I'm going to bring in sneaker, okay, okay here, and to start off, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the normal code browser that Ghidra has by clicking on the little Ghidra dragon. This is what I'm comfortable with, if you've seen this 
channel before, you know that I really love looking at the listings in the decompiler inside of the Ghidra code browser. As soon as it comes up, it doesn't have it in there for some reason. If you don't have yours as well, don't freak out. Go ahead and go to open, double click on it, bring it back in. Let's go ahead and analyze it. Do all the analytical things, please. And this one's going to be really quickly because it's such a small file. All right. And the way that I get to the main function is I always go to exports, click on entry. And that'll get me really close, in which we're already there to begin with. I went in and I pulled my compiler into this main window and I made it big so you guys can see. I like dealing with the compiler. I'm a C kind of guy. Compiler is my friend. I know assembly, but the C compiler is my friend. C decompiler in this case. So this is our libc start main. And this is the first parameter in that. This is going to be our main function where, where everything is kicked off from. So much so that I'm just going to go ahead and name it name main function. So let's name that main function and we'll be off. So we see that we got, a, we're going to make in the allocation the space for a, a local variable. And then here, starting off a local 88 is where the author has put in that array of characters in there to be looked at. So we can go through this line by line and try to dissect this, or we just can run it dynamically. Let's really quickly breeze over it line by line. I'm not going to jump into it in depth uh, because this is quite, um, it's got a lot going on. But let's see what we have. So we got, starting off at local 88, we got this gibberish. Here we have a function that passes in local 88 and thus everything that comes after it. And inside this function, it does a lot of stuff. We could break it down you know, step by step and see exactly which for and which if loop does what. Um, but I think we're just going to run this dynamically and see what it does. But after it does that, it does it again into another function that looks very similar. Once again, shifting things to the left by, by a parameter that is inputted. And also notice here that this address is being put into this undefined stack location plus offset and this stack location offset is also added into the second function that has our local 88 and then local 90 is then put into this s parameter and the s parameter is put into the puts more of the story is that there's a lot going on here if you want to properly reverse engineer this it's going to take a little bit but what we do know is that it does put out the final result as this S character onto the screen. So let's just go ahead and skip all of the static analysis part. Let's jump into some dynamic analysis. I'm going to hit X here. I'll save it. Why not? Uh, and instead of going to the dragon over here, we're going to go to the gears, the three gears that state emulator. Let's pop that open. All right. Same thing happens. Uh, this happens a lot for me on Ubuntu using Ghidra. Uh, it doesn't really open the file when I open the file for some reason. I always have to open it again. All right, so I got the symbol tree here on the left. There's a lot of different um, things that you can click in here on the left, a lot of different options. So just make sure that if you don't see your symbol tree immediately, just click through these till you bring up your symbol tree. Same thing, exports, let's go into entry, double click on that. If nothing shows up here, go ahead and look at your different tabs down here. And there we go. We got our entry inside of our listings, inside of our assembly. Um, I also have the decompile here, and I've made the text large. Yours might be over here on the right-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we have our modules, register, and breakpoints. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. We are at the entry point here with libstart main going into main function. We're really focusing on main function, and we want to catch... We want to follow along. We want to emulate that thread that main function is ran in. So we're going to go into main function itself. If you scroll through here, you'll see that what we have here looks exactly like we saw before in the code browser, even having S into puts and thus printing puts out on screen. So what we're going to do is we are going to follow this thread by go back up the top here to main function and also your decompile and your listings they stay together if you click on something and the decompile it will go to the same location in the listings. so 
Seeing that I like the decompile view, I'm going to click on main function. It's immediately going to take me to listings. And which I am going to right click here and I'm going to emulate program a new trace. If you want to, you can also use the button up here on the toolbar, emulate a current program, the current program, and a new trace at the starting cursor. Seeing that my cursor is here on the first instruction, this is exactly where I want to be. So once we do this, it is going to initiate the, the emulator. And now the program is actively running on this thread. So before we hit this play button and make the program move forward through the code, we need to throw in a breakpoint. And the best place to put a breakpoint is going to be at this put. Everything should be decoded and in a clear text state by the time that it gets to this put. So I'm gonna click on puts here. I'm gonna go down to the listings and it has me right here at puts. And I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard. You can also right click and go to add breakpoint. I like using K, that's a lot easier. So here we're gonna click okay. And then we are gonna see that our breakpoints are now here in this breakpoint tab. And of course, if you don't see it, Going to click on these tabs here. We have modules, registers, and breakpoints. So now that I have started emulating the process and in, in the current thread, and I have a breakpoint on puts, we should be able to continue forward. So I'm going to go up here to this little green button. I'm going to click it, or you can hit F5 on your keyboard. We're going to go ahead and click it once, and you see that my listings has put me at the puts. Uh, command and I have my blue breakpoint dot as well as the cursor. Now with that I'm going to click on register. The register is right over here on that tab and now I see that the registers have been filled with a lot of information. RDI is the one that I'm going to be focusing on at uh, the one that I want to be focusing on right now. Uh, we are going to right click on this and go to RAM which is going to be for Fox 4.8 and then here in the dynamic portion, we're going to click on that and we're going to scan. And here we are at, at four Fox four, eight, we have no more secrets. There it is clear text. It was encoded to begin with. We couldn't see what it was. It was a bunch of gibberish, but after it's gone through those two functions with all the parameters that it needed, it was able to spit this out into the puts and it's now inside of our memory. And if you wanted to make it look even better, you can left click on this, go to data and go to terminate a C string. There you go. They can no longer hide anything from us. No more secrets because we now know the key to, to, to pull out the secrets. And that is Ghidra's emulator. Thank you for checking out Ghidra's emulator with me. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And please, please, please hit those magic YouTube buttons. Show me some love. I would greatly appreciate it. Well, also, check out this YouTube playlist for even more reverse engineering tips and tricks.